Welcome to AT&T Little School 101. Uh, just a couple different gateways that we have here. Uh, PGW 320 model 500. All right. This is a 526 gateway AC. All right. Both of these gateways. Uh, this one only works on fiber. This one works on copper uh, and fiber. For this, this guy here, when you're on copper, you'll be using this green data cable or a white data cable as long as there's two pairs inside of it. Plugs it into the broadband side. All right, and this goes into the wall. Sometimes they'll send out a self-install kit, which is perfectly fine. You just gotta make sure that you find the AT&T branded jack. Um, if you don't have an AT&T branded jack, um, it's gonna be kind of hard to to find it, it'll be the size of an ethernet plug or a phone jack. Sometimes they'll mark on it, phone or AT&T or something, you might be able to connect to it. But without having an AT&T branded jack, it's kind of pointless to even do that. The AT&T branded jack that you'll want to see on the wall, it's this one here, it just plugs right into the broadband side and that's it. Uh, this other side is going to be for phone. All right. Let's say you don't have this at your home and they tell you have fiber. You should see one of these either in your garage or in a bedroom. Um, usually an outside wall. I've seen a lot of these on inside walls because they'll be able to drop the line through the, uh, through the wall if there's already something there or they'll drop a new line if they can. Um, you gotta make sure that you see both of these connected in here. You'll see one plugged in. I don't have fiber on this right now, but you should see something like this. Okay. You'll want the power light to be green, pawn to be green, no alarm. Once you see these two green, you know you're in service. When you're on the phone with at t rep or sales rep, they say, hey, uh, you should have one. Have them test this. They can run a quick test and make sure it's in service uh, or it's turned on. Once you notify that this is going on, then they'll send you this gate where the DGW-210 um, and at that point, you will connect this portion to the ONT broadband side. All right, once you got that plugged in properly and this one's running, the data light will start blinking green if it's under 100 megs or blinking amber if it's over 100 megs. And then you'll use your smart home manager app to activate the gateway. Once it's activated, you'll be able to see this Wi-Fi name and password on your app. That's where you can go in and change it to anything you want. All right, so you don't have this because you're in a higher uh, range or they got the new gateways out, then you'll be using this type of gateway. They will either send you a green SFP for anything under a thousand or a red SFP for anything over a thousand, up to 5,000 megabytes a second, which is what you'll read on this blue port. This plugs inside. You'll wanna be able to make sure you hear a click. When you're in, it's inside and you grab the data, the uh, fiber line that they give you through the email, and it's enclosed, it's not gonna be exposed, and you just plug it in. It's gonna be a little bit longer, all right? And same thing for the green SFP. I want to remove this, there's a little lever right there. Just lift that, and it comes right out. Same thing for the green. Plug in, you should hear it click. There it goes, click. Now it's in, same thing. Remove the little jumper or little buffer. Plug it in, and this goes into the wall jack. All right. Once you got all that going, pull that a minute. Once you got all that going, then you'll be able to activate the gateway. Do the same thing, Smart Home Manager app. These are just the basic gateways and routers, um, sorry, uh, ONTs or modem that you'll see in, at home for self-install or you just want to figure out where your modem is at because if kids come over or grandkids come over and they say, hey, where's your modem? And you're like, what is that? The box of the green lights, mom and dad. This one's actually going to have a white light on top of it with the BGW BG 320s. Uh, this is just your basic setup or your basic routers, gateways with AT&Ts. Five gigs, you gotta have a Cat 6A that can read that, and you gotta have a device that can push it. This does have Wi-Fi 6 built into it, 
within about a 10 foot range. You're not gonna go too, too far on the Wi-Fi 6. It does have a lot of range on the 5G AC and the 2.4. 2.4 has got real good range. I've seen it in backyards by the patios if someone has about 50 foot of backyard. You can get the 2.4 out there for some basic Wi-Fi music or anything like that. Uh, these have dual bands. Uh, 2.4 BG end cards and the 5G ACN end card. He's got some good range. Um, if you have this setup and this is in a room that um, that the AT&T tech can just swap out, I would prefer for this to be swapped out into this kind of gateway versus the dual setup because this has Wi-Fi 6 and a little bit better range than this guy over here. But um, Honestly, that's about it for this one. Um, what else can I talk about? This coax side here, yeah, it's for TV purposes. These are also for TV. Um, USB, I've seen people plug in their, um, what do you call it there, DirecTV. Um, I forgot what that thing's called for DirecTV and it powers it up. Please don't use that for that. Uh, phone line one and two here, you'll need to make sure it's a dual, it's a, a two pair like one of these with the white cable and it's two pairs coming out of it. Now you do want line one and line two, but you gotta have a phone that separates line one and line two. A lot of people don't use house phones. There's a funny TikTok that goes around and says, what if there's a phone in the house, but everybody uses it? And the guy's like, oh my God, it's a landline phone. Yeah, well, this is close to the landline phones that you'll be using. But um, I digress on something of fun. It's, um, same thing with this guy. You can use your phone line here. So here's something that's made, reminded me. Apartment complexes, you'll have this majority of the time and AT&T will send you this guy. You can't plug, you can't plug it into this broad, broadband because this is an ONT and so is this. You can't feed it up. It's not going to work. Even if you're to plug it into these other ports, it's not going to work. You'll have to tell AT&T to send you the proper gateway, which is one of these black ones. Uh, BGW, um, 210, 5268 uh, AC, uh, MVG 589. Uh, God, please don't use a 510. Just tell them to send you 5268 uh, or a BGW 210. Or send a tech and have them swap this out if, if they can. Uh, sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. But wherever this plate is at, this is where the gateway is going to have to go. Unless you have this one, then you can back feed it through the, uh, through the data panel. And then you can have them connected to this portion back here and you can have your modem centralized because most of these fiber lines are ran into the closet area. But uh, come back for another video and we'll do some Wi-Fi testing and ranges on this guy and ranges on this guy here and maybe some speed tests. I currently don't have anything that runs over a thousand megs in my home. It might be something I might want to do in the future, but uh, I think... Uh, 975 megabytes a second is just good. It's plenty speed. Um, real quick before I go, just because you have 5,000 megabyte service does not mean it's gonna reach the shed 200 feet away in the house or it's not gonna cover an 8,000 square foot home. Okay, you're gonna need extenders or a mesh system. You can go third party or stick with AT&T system. Either way, appreciate you guys watching. Y'all have a good one. Thank you very much.